on uh, what your normal pastor duties would be, but what made you decide to go more into the, the loving care and kindness end of, of your blessings for people, frankly? Well, when I got here, I realized that I couldn't do it alone. I had been a hospital chaplain, and I'd done a lot of person, one-to-one -one stuff, but I realized we had so many people. But in the process, I realized we all have so much to offer, and we are all the walking wounded. We all need it from each other, and we all have something to give. And so it's a process of realizing that that's our task as people, to care and love and lift and encourage people. And now you've reached out way beyond just the, the Christ Cathedral in our area here in Orange County. Talk about the, the Care and Kindness seminars that are taking place. Well, we started the Care and Kindness conference here about 15 years ago, and we are now making ourselves available anywhere that someone wants to have a conference. We have a foundation that's trying to support us, and so we are encouraging churches. I just came from Noblesville, Indiana, a Presbyterian church there. They had a weekend conference, and I went and was one of the primary speakers because we really want this to be what Christianity is about. We, we kind of emphasize that we're here to get people to heaven, and I'm happy for that. But Jesus' mission was to make heaven on earth, I think. When he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think he was telling us his mission and he's giving us our mission. And, and this world is so wonderful. This country and Canada and all the, some of the other countries that hear this message, they are such wonderful places, mostly because of the love of God, the instrumentality of God. You take a place like this. I don't know, I don't remember the name of the architect, but he was an instrument of God. This fabulous organ, it was made by an instrument of God. And we need to love and honor those people. No matter what their faith might be, they are instruments of God. Who should attend these conferences and, and what, what actually goes on? How does it work? Well, they are conferences. We have uh, workshops on everything from life to uh, alcohol problems and how to be a better listener and then we also try to inspire them to be giving and doing more and more you know this this great music we just had what is it good for well one of the chapters of the book is it's sunday but monday is coming yeah that music is healing it has healed us why so that we can be out there tomorrow loving, caring, working, producing more to make this world a better place. So that's, that's why we come to church. It's Sunday because Monday is coming, not just to soak in this, we gotta use it. Yeah. Well, you've got uh, the miracle of kindness we're talking about, and there are a number of miracles that you reference in here. I talk about one that might be your favorite. Well, my favorite happens to be one of the guys, is Don, Don Heinlein, or he's sitting right down front. Some friends urged him to come here to the Home Builder Sunday School class. And his, he and his wife's lives were changed by their kindness, their, kindness, their friendliness, their love. Right, Don? <laughs> and he's, he's here today. But that's, that's one of the magnificent stories. But there's all those little ones, too. The Karen Kindness Conference got stimulated in me when I heard a story from one of our committee members she came up to me and she said she'd been waiting in the car and somebody knocked at her window. And she opened the window and there was another woman. And this woman said, thank you for smiling at me when I drove in. I've been so discouraged today and your smile just lifted me and healed me. That's, that's one of my favorites because it was so, so big in my life. How can folks here and those watching, how, how can they put this to practice? Well, I think everywhere we go. You go to Walgreens or Ralph's or something, per people are around you, you notice people and you say something to them. You notice what they're wearing, you notice their hair, you say you're looking good. You give little compliments. That's the simplest way and it's everywhere and it's so available and it's so possible. So it's, it's something we as Christians need to do, be doing all the time to show the world that God is love, because that is love, and that is, you're giving love, you're giving God to people, and that is so 
important and so necessary. We have to be special, and it's so easy to be that special. Is there something you want to add before we wind this up? Well, uh, this Care and Kindness Committee has a plan. They are going to honor a dozen people who've been wonderful helpers here. And we're having on October 13, and we need you to come. We're going to have a big celebration appreciation banquet for people who've been ushering for 40 years, who've been tour guides for 30 years, one man he's been out in the, dry, in the parking lot for 40 years. We are going to honor them and appreciate them and celebrate them. And so that's called the Celebration Banquet on October 13. Please come. We need you. We need to pay the bills, $25 each. Well, I'll tell you, you've made a, a big difference in a lot of lives, not only here, but around this great nation of ours. And he's going to be available after the service over in the Welcoming Center. If you'd like to stop over, meet Jim. Also copy of his book, have him sign it for you. He'd love to do so, and you can stand and ask him those same three questions. Okay? <laughs> Feel free to do so. Jim, God loves you, and so do I. Thank, Thank you so you. much for Thank being here. Thank you very us. much.